It's Thursday, February 26th, and here's some of the news beyond the headlines. Russia has refused to release a Ukrainian pilot from prison. On Wednesday, a Moscow court ruled that Nadezhda Savchenko should remain in custody pending an investigation. She's accused of involvement in the deaths of two Russian journalists in eastern Ukraine, a charge she denies. Authorities say Savchenko crossed the Russian border before she was detained, but she claims she was dragged. She's been on hunger strike since December 13th, and her family and lawyers say they're worried her health will continue to deteriorate. Iran's armed forces are practicing how to sink an American aircraft carrier. On Wednesday, the country's elite Revolutionary Guard launched a speedboat attack on a replica U.S. ship near the Strait of Hormuz. It's the first time a major symbol of American naval power is the target of the country's military exercises. Military forces also shot down a drone and planted undersea mines. Chief Commander General Muhammad Ali Jafari said the drills send a message of might to, quote, extraterritorial powers. A U.S. Navy spokesman said Washington isn't really concerned. Two major cocaine busts have dealt a blow to Colombian drug traffickers. More than three tons of cocaine were seized from the Los Susuga gang in the jungles of Unguia on Monday. A similar amount was found in fertilizer bags being transported to Mexico last week. Authorities say each stash has a street value of between 80 and 90 million dollars, and both were bound for the U.S. Three Austrians have become the first in the world to use their minds to control prosthetic limbs. Doctors at the Medical University of Vienna used a technique they call bionic reconstruction, which involves transplanting nerves and muscles from the leg to the hand. Each of the men had agreed to amputations after sustaining significant nerve damage in either car or climbing accidents. After the procedure and months of training, they were able to do things like pour juice from a carton, lift a jar, and undo buttons. But a better quality of life comes at a cost. The men will have to take medication for the rest of their lives to avoid complications. Check out the Vice News YouTube channel for more original reporting and documentaries from around the world. I remember a time when I used to go to Gaza Strip and I used to eat there and to do shopping over there, to go to the beach over there. I really believe it could happen again. I cannot see it right now. I know where I'm living, but I really hope that one day it will happen. And when it will happen, I want to be here.